Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are re rejoining our simulation here of the Space Shuttle uh, Truth and Reason. And we're going to see if this thing can actually re-enter the atmosphere, which is as yet untested. Uh, I'm going to make this burn at uh, Perry G. In hopes that we have enough fuel to bring our ridiculously high Apogee down. Uh, because really I want to try for a nice, slow, easy descent just for this simulation. I'm not really concerned about where we come down. It's just a simulation. The true test of this is to see, one, how well it will glide, especially when empty, and two, to see if it will actually survive re-entry. So, uh, we've obviously engaged our orbital maneuvering thrusters, those twin lunar ascent module engines which uh, don't provide very much thrust, but their ISP is pretty high. And, uh, well, we can only wait and see, because this bird is going to take a long time. <laughs> Just like doing anything with the uh, orbital thrusters, it's going to take a long time. Because, <laughs> yeah, I think these provide, what, 11 kilonewtons of thrust apiece? Oh, 15.6 apiece. So... Not a whole lot going for them. I think we've moved all of the fuel up to the front. Yeah. Alright. I'm thinking we'll have more than enough as we're getting ready to be have a circularized orbit now. And now our periapsis is down here. So we're going to bring that in to about 64. I'm hoping that's a good re-entry number. Oop, 62. Not great, but we'll give it a try. And there's the non-functional satellite that we deployed because I forgot to turn on the batteries, but doesn't matter. It's a simulation. So uh, we've got about an hour 31 left in our allotted simulator time. Thank you, budget constraints. But this is a really expensive spacecraft to build, so I don't want to build it unless I absolutely have to. All right, we need to get ourselves angled appropriately. Right about there should do it. And let's go ahead and pull back in our panels. It's nighttime, we don't need them right now anyway. And I guess we'll go ahead and deploy the air brakes, though they won't do us much good for quite a while. I... where is the center of mass? Here. So those air brakes are almost on the center of mass. I wanted them a little behind it so that they would help us keep our angle. But, um... Yeah, here goes nothing. Well, with all the fuel pumped up to the nose tanks, I guess we do have as much... We've shifted the center of mass as far as forward as we can. It should, it should still be well in front of the center of lift, which is probably right around here. But, oh man. Those oscillations do not make me feel good about life. Should probably take it out of time warp mode. <laughs> Even though I would really like to speed this up, just so I can know if this thing is going to work. And we do still have a bit of fuel left, so I think our lift capacity is probably around two tons to low Earth orbit. If I had that ascent profile a little better, maybe we could push it to two and a half. But it's going to take me a while to figure out the most effective trajectory for this thing. Because it does behave so different from traditional uh, disposable rockets. Right. And we're still picking up speed. Man, I hope you guys can see any of this all right. I guess when the fireworks start, it won't matter so much, huh? So, <laughs> let's just... Yeah, our periapsis is lowering because of drag across the wings. 
but so is our Apogee. Now, <laughs> I think the last addition to this is probably going to include parachutes because wheels in 1.1.3 just um, do not cooperate. <laughs> All right, well, 119. We should see heat warnings in about another 18 kilometers. Oh man, our perigee has fallen very low, nervously low. Uh, we will certainly not be making another orbit, considering our apogee is already down to about 148 kilometers, and we haven't even started a real uh, deceleration yet. Eek. <laughs> Periapsis is now at. Oh yeah, we're we're coming in. There's no stopping this train. Periapsis is negative. Starting to show some glowing now. have an overheat warning on a thruster. Uh, we're probably going to lose those thrusters. Yep, and there goes it's all four of these here on the nose. We are probably going to lose. I did not know that those were not uh, shielded. And there it is. Yep. Well, that's a bummer. We're not going to get these thruster ports back. Okay, those are also two thruster ports. Not of much concern. Yeah. Bummer. Really shocked these two here haven't gone. Yeah, may have spoken too soon. Or not. All right. <laughs> Heat warnings on multiple thrusters. I think anything that's going to be on the money making side of this descent. But so long as we keep our landing gear and wings, fuel tanks. We should be fine, right? No, 
Is that our landing gear? I think we're gonna lose our nose gear. What is that a heat warning for? Tell me that's not for the wing surface. Okay, it was not for the wing surface and it was not for the landing gear. I really have no clue what that was all about. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no 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 no. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. Come on. What's exploding? I think those are all still thruster ports. Oh, but we don't have any thruster ports to correct for this. This dive is uncontrolled. Pull back the air brakes. Things are going quite badly. Ah, <laughs> uh, I can't control it. Oh no, oh no. That is the opposite of the roll I'm trying to make. Why has the controls... Oh, no. Do not lose the cargo bay. Do not lose the cargo bay. There's not enough air for us to maintain a real control. Oh, God. Get out of that. Pull up. Get out of that. Spin, spin, spin. Do not put that side into the heat. No. Ah, we lost the cargo bay. That's it. It's doomed now. <laughs> well, I guess we have our answer. Well, good. I'm glad the cargo bay, the necessary part for this entire <laughs> vessel has become the weak point. Yep. Too much drag. Okay. Well, we have our answer. <laughs> At the very least, we can watch the rest of this thing tear itself apart. <laughs> well, the wing services are doing okay. And that was my concern, was that the wings were not going to be re-entry rated. How to keep the heat off that cargo bay? I I don't I don't really know. Very interesting. How to keep it from killing some kerbals it would also be a very effective lesson to learn. Because we're not going to fly it if it keeps killing people, obviously. But hey, it made it to orbit in that on 1960s technology. How to maintain attitude control while descending from orbit is a, another story entirely. See, all of this survived. The landing gear, all, every inch of wing surface. And we were even able to bring a J-2 home. Most of the tailplanes. This thing is going to be so aerodynamically unstable. <laughs> oh, wait, more heating. Is there a, no, there's no core. I have no control over this. I thought there was, but... I think it was uh, at the back of the cargo bay and probably separated and exploded with that. Although, really, it seems to be telling me that this is a prograde vector, so I don't know what part on this is being considered the root and why it's facing backwards. But okay. This is very interesting.
Very interesting indeed. All right. Well, uh, very short episode. So sorry. Not sorry. <laughs> We're probably not going to watch this crash because it's not very interesting because the water either looks like poop or is invisible. Take your pick. Anyway, thanks for hanging out, everybody. I do appreciate it. Uh, we're going to go make some changes to this thing, and I will see you in the next episode. Till then, see you later.